In this video, I will show you how to run c .net applications on FreeBSD. Recently, there was a new port introduced on FreeBSD by the name .NET. And this one is a port of .NET version 8, and it was introduced actually this year, 2024, a few months ago. Until now, you could run .NET applications on FreeBSD using the Linux version of .NET 8. FreeBSD has a Linux compatibility layer, which enables you to run Linux applications almost natively on FreeBSD. And .NET 8 was one of those that you could run as a Linux application, but now you don't need to, because with this port, you can run it natively. So in this video, I will show you how you can install the port, and we will also run a simple .NET application. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. So let's see how we can install .NET. At the time of recording, it looks like that .NET is not yet available as a PKG package. So this means that we cannot use the PKG package manager to install it, but we can still build it from source. So let's see how that works. Now to be fair, installing from source would be the second best option after the PKG package manager. Everything should just work as it should and there are no weird configuring steps, but it can take a long time to build a package like .NET. It can take hours. So thankfully we also have a second option that we can do instead, which takes only a few minutes and it is a bit weird to configure. So if you want to skip to the hacky way of doing it, you can find the timestamp down in the description. So first, let's see how to build it from source. I will close this one. The variant of FreeBSD that I'm using right now is called NomadBSD. This one is installed and runs from a USB drive and it is by far my favorite FreeBSD variant. I also made a video about how you can install NomadBSD on a USB drive. So if you want to try out NomadBSD yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. I will open the terminal. Now the easiest way to get the source of any port is to use a package called portsnap. So let's install portsnap. sudo pkg install portsnap. Perfect. Let's see what we have. portsnap dash dash help. So the best would be to just use the auto option, which will fetch the updates and then extract those. So let's do it. sudo portsnap auto. Now this can take some time. Perfect, the ports tree is installed, and now you should find the .NET port, slash usr slash port slash lang slash .NET. And now to build and install it, just write sudo make install and clean. This will build it, install it, and also clean up some leftovers from the build. So let's do it. Enter. I will watch the clock up there, so we'll see how long it takes on my side. Now if you get some of those prompts, just continue with OK. Finally installed, and this took like two and a half hours, maybe more. Now to be fair, I actually got an error on the first try, and it was this one. It tried to build the Microsoft.NET Arcade SDK, and then it just exited with code 1. So what I did then... I just ran the same command again, sudo make install clean, and then on the second try, it worked. When I was installing it two weeks ago, it worked on the first try. So this error is something new. I hope they will fix that in the future. But let's see if .NET is actually installed. I will clear the terminal. And now let's try .NET dash dash version. And it works. .NET version 8 is installed. This was building and installing .NET from source. Now if you don't want to do that, or if you don't have time to wait for the build, then there is a second option. Now to demonstrate the second option, I will first need to remove the .NET version that is currently installed. So let's do it. Once a package is built and installed from source, you can also remove it using the pkg command, what I did right here. I will clear the terminal. And now let's install it the hacky way. Here on the FreeBSD forum, you have a guide how to install .NET on FreeBSD 14. 
First, we need to download the SDK on this link here. Let's go with the release number 8. Under Assets, click on Show All Assets. We want .NET SDK, so let's download that one. Download complete. Here it is. Now let's copy that one to my home directory. Back to the guide. Now, if you're using CSH, then here are the steps what you need to do. And if you're using Bash, then the steps are here. So I already copied the package to my home folder. Then the next step is to define .NET file. So let's copy that and open the terminal. I'm inside my home folder. Now let's run bash and let's copy in the command. And of course, adjust the command name. This is it. Then next, let's copy that. Paste it here. Enter next. Basically, this should be it. Let's see if it works. .NET dash dash version. It works. We got the version. In this case, .NET is not really installed. It's just extracted and only some environment variables are set so the system can find it. So in this case, if you want to have .NET always available, it would be good to put those two lines inside the slash etc slash profile. So the environment variables will be always set on every startup to sudo vim etc profile. Scroll all the way down. Now press I and move the cursor to the end of the line and press enter. I will copy it line by line and right click to paste. Enter and now the second line. Paste. Now press escape and write a colon wq. Enter, and the file is saved. Now let's try to run a simple .NET application. I already cleared the terminal, and let's close Firefox. Let's see if .NET is still working. It's working. The application that we will run is under UI examples, server, bin, release, net8. Let's see what's inside. This is a simple server application that I have prepared. And as you can see, this one was built on Windows because of the exe file. Now to run this application, just write .NET server DLL. So we don't want to run the exe directly, but the underlying DLL. Let's see if it works. Enter. So the server is running and it is listening on localhost port 5000. Let's open this one. And here it is. It is just a simple table with images, names, and IDs. There is also a second page, slash about. And this one just writes server information in text format. So here you can see the file that is currently executed, then the .NET version, which is version 8, then the platform, which is FreeBSD or Unix, version 14, and just a simple message from a random API. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. Now if this seems familiar to you, it actually is, because this is basically the same example that I also used for the GTK application. I just packed this one inside a server instead of using a GTK GUI. In a previous video, I showed you how you can develop cross-platform GTK applications using csharp.net. And this is basically the same example, just using a GTK GUI. So if you want to develop cross-platform GTK applications yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.